Similar to you, uh, we've had uh, aspirations to grow nationally. Uh, everyone speaks about this global marketplace now. Uh, certainly, it is becoming a global marketplace. And uh, from a more micro perspective, we look across Canada, and it's a natural that if you're doing business in Ontario, uh, other markets become very, very suitable. We've grown ourselves across the country traditionally by uh, forging relationships with other brokerages who are experts in those markets. And we found that to be very fruitful. Uh, I don't claim to know uh, Medicine Hat better than a local broker in Medicine Hat. And to date that's worked very well for us and, and we hope to continue to build that, uh, that national business as well. You know, I think you said earlier to me, you know, your father Yossi said it's better to get half a check than a kick in the pants. You know, and, and that, that's true. And so our philosophy, and, and we have, you know, a, a number of young brokers working for us, and there's sort of a tendency to want to do both sides of the deal. And you can understand that you work hard for your listing and things like that. But I think that, uh, first of all, you'll serve your client better by cooperating with other brokers. You can't know every broker. You can't know every apartment owner, every building in any city. Other brokers are, are going to know people that you just can't know as well. Even if you know of them or you have them in your database, you don't have a relationship with them. And we know this is a relationship business for sure. So I fully agree with you. I think cooperating with other brokers makes a lot of sense. Um, and the client is ultimately served better. But I believe your brokerage will also be served better and that people will bring you business. I'm sure if I talk to you and your dad, you could tell me many stories where other brokers brought you business because they knew you could execute when they couldn't. They had the relationship, but you had the platform and you had the exposure to the buyers and things like that, right? So we work hard at co-brokerage. It's one of the cornerstones of our company and that we go out there and work with our fellow brokers. You even have a tab on your website uh, that uh, pertains to other brokers and, and you want the brokers to click on that tab and figure out how they can conduct business together with you and be mutually successful. If you go to our website, you'll see we have a tab there that says for brokers. And when you click in on that, there's a whole bunch of videos there on how we work with brokers, how we share the commission, the work that we do, the work that the broker does. We also recently had the, uh, the Ivy School of Business at the University of Ontario uh, do a study on co-brokerage. So we called our competitors and we said, what would it take to get you to co-brokerage? And actually that study is on our webpage. And I encourage any brokers listening to this to, uh, to go and read that study. It was fascinating what they found out. Well, I think that's great. And uh, we've talked about this before, but ultimately, you know, we're working for our clients and it's all about the deal. So if cooperating with other brokers means we're gonna get a quicker deal and a better deal for our clients, then we need to be doing that. Secondly, I concur with you as well in that it's almost better because sure, you'll get 50% of a commission on a successful deal that's cooperated with another broker, but you mentioned it, this business is all about relationships. So you've cooperated, you've now forged a relationship, potentially a lifetime relationship with another broker and another brokerage with whom you're likely going to end up doing more and more business throughout the years. So I think it, arguably it's even a better thing to cooperate than not to. You know, um, our broker of record uh, when we first started the business was a, was a dear friend of mine and a mentor, Daryl McCullough, and he said this to me. He said, you'll forget the deals you do, but you'll never forget the broker you did the deal with. And that was sage advice. I didn't think that was that, that Daryl talking, you know what I mean? But it was absolutely right. You, you forget the deals, you forget the price, you forget the address, but you never forget the individual you did the deal with, right? And so when we look at our business, every time we do something, I always ask myself the question, how do I do it bigger, faster, cheaper, and easier? Well, if you're gonna do an apartment deal in another province or in another sector that you don't specialize in or someone's got a stronger relationship with the buyer or the seller, you're gonna do that deal bigger, faster, cheaper, and easier. When I think back to my own career, and this probably pertains to all of us, I remember all of the brokers that I co-broked deals with in, in my first few years. Yes. And I can tell you the vast majority, if not all of them, are still on my weekly or monthly roster that I speak with because we did forge that relationship and we figured out a way to make each other's lives easier and concurrently perform for our clients. So it's been great. We both pride uh, ourselves and our organizations on, on a spirit of cooperation yes. and, and co-broking. Yes. Um, I've done many, many co-broking deals and I, I always feel great about them afterwards. Uh, can you perhaps speak to uh, perhaps a specific deal that you've done on a co-broke basis that's stuck out in your mind? Sure. So, you know, our offices are here in, in Southern Ontario. We did a, a deal in Edmonton. It was a $60 million deal. It wasn't a small deal. Well, we had a relationship, uh, you know, with the owner of the property. But the buyer of the property was from Alberta. 
And so the buyer's office was in Calgary. Here we are in, uh, in, in, in Toronto, and the building's in Edmonton. Well, you know, I called up a guy I trusted from CB, Harvey Russell. And Harvey's a very experienced commercial broker specializing in apartments. And we've known each other for a long time, and we've always shared information back and forth. So I called Harvey and said, Harvey, we've got a building here to sell. Do you have someone to buy? And he said, yes, I do. And Harvey knew the ground there. He knew about the building. He knew the best buyers for it. And so we, you know, we, we got a laser beam focus, found the right buyer. You know, I managed things here. Harvey managed things on the ground there. And we got the deal across the goal line. And it was a complex deal. There were issues during the deal. There always are. And I don't think I could have got that deal across the goal line myself. Sometimes you just need to jump in your car, drive across town, and go meet the buyer or the seller because there's an issue. When you're living over here, it's a one-day, uh, two-day cross-continental odyssey to get over there, right, to do it. So, yeah, we're, 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 we're fans of co-brokers, and we've got examples where the deals couldn't have been done without the co-broker, and sometimes we bring them the, the, you know, the building for sale, they bring the buyer, and sometimes it's the other way around. There are nuances of specific markets that local brokers know best. And we could pretend to, to know those marketplaces or the players within those markets well, but ultimately we don't know them as well as the guys who live there who potentially golf with the owners regularly or whatnot. Also what I find is, you know, it really is a global marketplace and there's a lot of global capital yes. coming into Canada. Uh, the owners of some of these properties, uh, English may not be their first language. Yes. And, and so what we found is we've co-broked with specific ethnic brokers who speak the language yes. and who could really get in and understand the needs and wants of the seller or the buyer and really help us put that together. And we've embraced that. Yeah. And so co-brokerage doesn't involve just geographic expertise, right? It involves cultural expertise. It involves financial expertise. I really don't know much about bringing money over here from the Middle East. There's a process to bring it over here. But we sold a number of buildings to Kuwaiti investors. But it needed someone who understood what it's how you bring Middle Eastern market money over here and how you deal with people from you know other continents and other cultures and things like that so yeah it's it's a complex business and the day of the one-man broker who sort of knows everyone in town um, is difficult to do over the past couple of years and it's been it's been in the news and whatnot but my father put together a, a kind of a landmark deal where he syndicated a private cemetery a private Jewish cemetery yes and ultimately uh, sold it to two Muslim groups, right. the Sunnis and the Shiites. Right. He cooperated with a Muslim agent yes. who was a fantastic agent. Uh, My father and him put the deal together. Right. And some of the cultural nuances involved an interest-free mortgage yes. uh, that was given uh, to the buyer right. for a year, a significant uh, mortgage. Yeah, that, that was a cultural nuance that we probably would not have picked up on our own. And it's probably a deal that uh, we could not have done ourselves. And it's another example of not just geographic nuances, but cultural nuances. That cultural, are finances, geographic, uh, relationship, yeah, absolutely. that's actually a great story. And you know, only in Canada could something like that happen. And you, you just quoted Yossi Bahar. Yeah. Um, in all the newspapers and all the letters, he said, only in Canada could something like this happen. Yeah. It's the only country in the world. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and just, just mentioning Canada, you know, we have our Canada Day celebrations here in this park. The, you know, the Hamilton Philharmonic comes here and then they do fireworks at the end of the pier. And I always just marvel at this country. You know, guys like your dad, guys like, you know, my father came to this country, you know, worked hard and they could get into real estate, right? Because it was a relatively easy business to get into. You just had to work hard. You didn't have to speak the language perfectly. You didn't have to have, you know, two degrees or something like that. So real estate is, is a great business for people who like people, who can pay attention to detail, right? And who like to form relationships. It's all about cooperation. Yeah. Anyways, thank you, thank you for doing this today.